So this cuts this thing in half. It may not look like that. It looks like it's a little bit higher, but I'm just trying to show that, yeah. that indeed that this right here does cut that in half, which is important if when we go to do the rest of this. Otherwise, I mean, and I could have, you could have gotten a bunch of things if maybe they were both like halfway, maybe way up here somewhere that would still be one full period from there to there. But then we'd have a hard time knowing how far to move it this way. So let's go ahead and just talk about this, okay? So I've drawn some stuff, and I said that this thing, this curve, can be written, in this case we have two separate questions. The first one I'm saying this could be written as some number times sine of some stuff plus another number. And the idea is to find what each of those numbers would be. Second question, completely different question, not related to the first at all. We say, well, related in that it's still this thing. Forget about that stuff. Now we're saying you could have written it as cosine of stuff. Um, and if that were the case, how would you do that, right? And so in both cases, two of these numbers, that is of the A, B, C, and D, two of them are going to be the same for both of these. And I think those are the two easiest ones to find. What are those? A is three. No, he's four. Wait. He's, I mean, a is two. neither he's three two. nor four. Wait, is two? So, first off, the question I asked you guys was which of the numbers are, are the ones that are going to remain the same in both of these? A and, a and D. A and D are going to be the same because, right, it's, it doesn't, like, the, the, everything's the same for this. Like, sine and cosine go between one and negative one. If it's been stretched by a certain amount, Okay, it's the same whether it's sine or cosine. And then if it's been shifted a certain amount, which it has, then that's going to be the same whether or not it's sine or cosine. And yes, it is A and D. And so how are we going to find A? Somebody said it was 3, which doesn't make any sense. Somebody said it was 4, which makes even less sense. What's the total, <laughs> what's the total height from here to here? 4. Uh-huh, and so what's one half of that? 2. 2! That's the amplitude, yeah. right? Because think about it, think about it. If sine normally goes from one to minus one, that's when the amplitude is equal to a big fat one, yeah. right? And so then when you multiply it by two, you stretch it up to two and down to negative two, yeah. right? So that's, I know, I often think of the entire height as the amplitude. It's not, by definition, Amplitude is half the, the total height. And it's because of this, right? Like this is easy to do. Since sine goes between one and one, if you multiply it by four, you go up to four and down to negative four, but then the total span of the outputs would be eight. So going in reverse, you say, well, what's the total? In this case, it's four. Half of that then would be two. And so A in both cases is equal to two. Now that gives us D pretty easily. If A is equal to two, then what's this point right here? Two, two. So the distance from here to here needs to be two. Oh, the distance one. from here it's to here needs to be two. It's half of three. It's not half of three. It's, one. it's half of three minus minus one. Yeah. Yeah, because... Right, and so 4 over 2, and then you say it's 2. Well, it's not 2. <laughs> it's that this distance from here to here is 2. This distance from here to here is 2. Uh -oh. Yeah. So really what this is is the average of these guys. If you, if you want a formula for it, it would be the average of those two numbers. The average of this would be 2 over 2, which is 1. The halfway point between any two numbers on a line is the average of those two numbers. I prefer to do it visually. I say, well, hold up. If the total length is, two, is four, half the length is two, and then I just count backwards. I go, okay, count back by two, two. Okay, it's that, it's that one, it's one. And so that's how I do it. And I use my fingers every single time or I'm gonna mess it up. No. Um, and then I, I'm going to check also and go, wait, is it two from here to here? And actually, when I was working this problem out, I did mess this up. <laughs> like, I, I, think I, I think I did two here because it's so easy to mess up. But then when I went to check and I was like, wait a minute, one, two, oh, oh, that needs to be two as well. Yeah, okay. And so 
Indeed, that's two units. Okay, and so that means that D is what? One. And that's the same, that's going to be the same for this and that, right? Because it doesn't matter whether it was a cosine curve or a sine curve that got stretched vertically and shifted. That's going to be that. Okay, now. So, I can never. No, no, we're good. Okay. So now let's just work on problem one. Let's forget about problem two right now. What are we going to do? We need to find b and c. Well, if you plug in pi over 3, you could have a 1. And if you plug in a 7 pi over 6, you got a Yeah. So that's two that's, equations. Yeah. And that would give in, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's see how that's going to work out for us. <laughs> that's, that's, a good, that's a good idea. And that would be going right along with... You said you plug in a pi over 3 uh, plus 1. You said that that gives you out a 1. And if you plug this guy in to sine of b 7 pi over 6 plus c plus 1, also gives you out a 1. You could have fun with that. It's, this is not linear. If this were one, yeah. like if that were an x, that would be a great way of going about doing it. Now it does turn out like you could take this and solve it and say, well, one minus one on no, both sides gives you this. Right. Two sine of stuff is equal to zero, which means that sine of stuff is equal to zero, which means that whatever goes in here, whatever theta is, theta sine is zero at zero and again at pi. So that means that theta is n times pi where n is an integer, and then you say, okay, b times pi over 3 plus c equals n pi, and you get the same thing out of this guy. Good luck. You'll be doing that all night, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, it's doable. It is doable because you have two unknowns and you have two equations. It's, it is doable, but not preferable. How did we talk about finding b for these types of problems? B is related to something we called what? This compression? Well, yes, yes. But in particular, what I'm thinking, I'm not going to lead you anymore. I'm going to think the period. Oh. The period is equal to 2 pi divided by whatever the absolute value of B is. I'm just going to write it as B. And so if we could find the period here, then we can find b, because the period is just going to be some number. We'll set it equal to this, and then we'll have one unknown in one equation. So what is the period? How do we find the period? 2 pi over b. <laughs> but I mean, from the picture, what is the period of this picture right here? Uh, pi. Right. No, 2 pi. No. Nope. It would be whatever this distance is right here, oh, right? So because of the way I've drawn it, right? The, the, these two points make one full period, yeah. right? And that's like what we're looking at, especially when we're looking at sine here. Although it won't matter whether it's sine or cosine. And, and like I said earlier, like I could have put these points right here and said that's pi, and the period would be the same because they're off by exactly however much, right? No matter where I put it on here that that's going to define the period. Find, if I did that, though, finding C would be impossible, just with what I've, what I've drawn. But here, we could just say whatever, that's one full period right there. So whatever that distance is gives me the length of the period. So 7 pi over 6 okay. minus pi over 3. There you go. So 7 pi over 6 minus pi over 3 which is the same thing as 7 pi over 6 minus, I need something over 6, what would it be? 2 pi over 6, Two pi over six which is how many somethings over what? 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. So the period, the total distance until it repeats, it doesn't matter where we are, from here to here, it's 5 pi over 6. From here to here, it's 5 pi over 6. From there to there, from anywhere to anywhere, because this thing is assumed, you can't tell because I draw terribly, but it's, it's assumed to be a sine curve. And so, okay, 5 pi over 6. So, here's 5 pi over 6. Now, you can cancel the pi. 
You can cancel a lot of stuff. I'm gonna do this in one fell swoop. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna bring the variable I want upstairs. So he comes up here. This guy stays put. This guy comes upstairs. This guy goes downstairs. Does everybody buy that? Yeah. Did that work? Did I mess any of that up? I know the six and the B look alike. That's not, <laughs> we don't wanna mess that up. Okay, so the pies cancel. There's no five in there, so it must just be 12 over five equals B. That's gonna be true whether or not this is a sine or a cosine. Well, that happened to be the same too. Oh yeah. Right? Because, I mean, that's how sine and cosine are. They're, <laughs> the way they're defined, like, they, this one has a period, the normal sine has a period of 2 pi, cosine has a period of 2 pi, they have the same period, so this has to be the same. If it's been squeezed, the only difference, though, is going to be what C is. And right now, we're just working on sine. So, there are two ways of doing this. Everybody got this? I get rid of this. All right, so we're at 12 over 5 for our B. I think the more straightforward way, or I don't know, it's actually, I think it's probably less straightforward. The way I like to do it is I imagine, okay, I already have a sine curve, and I've compressed it by this factor. And so that gives me sine of 12 over 5x. And then what I'm going to, and now that, what that would be, would be this guy going through right there, right? That point would be going through right there. Now all I need to do is take that point and shift it. Now I'm not thinking about the upwards and the stretches and stuff like that. I'm just thinking about this distance here, right? And I could see that there's that point right there, right? Be careful not to choose that point because that's a different point. Right? That's, that's qualitatively different. We're decreasing as we go through that point. We're increasing as we go through that point. So I could grab this point if I wanted. I didn't say to find the smallest B that may, or the smallest shift C or one that's over here. Like I think there was in your homework, you know, you had to choose one that was over here. Whatever. I said any of them. You could choose this point. You could choose this point. But the point, the, the idea is if I had this, which is this, and I needed to shift it, I would need to take this point and shift it to the right by that many units. And so the way to do that would be to, am I gonna add or subtract? I'm gonna subtract, because that's a shift to the right. And what am I gonna subtract? If this guy needs to come over to oh, pi here, over pi over three. Now that doesn't give me C, you'll notice, because I didn't say to write it in the, in the form sine B times X plus C. That's not what I said, right? And so we need to do a little bit more work here and say, well, then, whatever, right, I'm going to distribute this guy in so that it would be sine 12 fifths X and then minus 12 fifths times pi over three. That cancels and gives me a what's left over on top? Four. A four. So, sum 12 fifths x minus four pi over five. And now filling the rest of it in, our a, right, our a was two, and our D was one, and there we go. There you have it. Now, alternately, you could remember a formula for the phase shift, and the phase shift is negative C over B. Negative C, C is the thing we're looking for, but the phase shift, right, but the, the way we've defined phase shift is if you found that zero point, which we know for sine, what happens at zero is this guy right there, then we would need to shift him over by that much, and that would be pi over three. By definition, that's what phase shift is. 
Okay, so it's how far you would have to shift this guy, keeping the same sign. So it would be plus pi over three. And so the phase shift, by definition, is plus pi over three. We know that b is equal to 12 fifths, so we have negative c over 12 fifths equals pi over three. And you'll notice when we do this, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 12 over five. Oh, it's the same thing. Lo and behold, it's the same thing. I'm going to take the negative onto the other side. And I'm not going to bother with the calculations because we just did it. It is the exact same thing. You'll notice, okay, then C, you plug in a negative 4 pi over 5 for C, and you do end up with the exact same thing. So two equivalent ways of finding that C. I prefer this way. If you prefer this way, that's cool. It's really not that much to memorize, right? But the kind of nice thing here is you're using the principles that we've used before. It's like, well, if I had this, how far would I have to shift it? In which direction? Well, it would be a shift right by pi over 3. Shift right is minus pi over 3 to the input value. Just remember your parentheses. So that's that. Now, here's this is, this is a little bit tricky. So. A, I'm going to go ahead and write it up here. 2 sine 12 fifths x minus 4 pi over 5 plus 1. That's what we got for 1 right there. Okay, now let's get rid of this. Exact same stuff is true for cosine. As we've noted before, you would go through the same reasoning as you did for sine to get to this point. And now you'd say, well, now I just need to find the phase shift, which is C. Well, the phase shift, which is negative C over B. But now I just need to find out what is that, that guy right there. <coughs> now I'm thinking, OK, so just like I did before, I'm going to think, well, if I had cosine of 12 fifths x, cosine at 0 starts where? positive 1 and comes down. And so now, and we're, we're pretending that this total period is 5 pi over 6. So I guess, yeah, I mean, we could if we want to do write that right there, 5 pi over 6. That's what we've done. We've compressed it. That's what that does. If I gave you this and told you to graph it, you should be able to come up with this. Now we just need to take that guy and shift him to here. So then the question is, how do we find what that point is right there? That's a vertex. Mm-hmm. Make which is wasn't there a formula for that? Well that's for <laughs> practice. <laughs> You're asking me if there's a formula. No, my answer is almost invariably no, there's not a formula. Um, we're gonna have to do some work to figure out. Now, one thing that we have been doing, though, like let's think about what I've, what I've told you to do when graphing something. Let's say you're graphing something and it goes like this. We know what this point is. We know what this point is. And I say, how do we get this point, this point, and this point? Oh, we can get the middle one by subtracting. And then we can subtract again to get the middle one. Let's right. say it equals 3. Then you get a ton of camera. Well, there's... I, I'm, I'm hearing both of those things. They seem, they seem decent. There's a way I said to do it, though. The way I like to do it is you take that total distance and you notice you oh, just chop yeah. that into how many pieces? Four. Four, four yeah. pieces. And so if you know the total distance, then you could find what that distance is right there. Oh, yeah. So what was the total distance? I lost it five already. Pi over six. The period it's was five. 5 pi over 6. So in other words, this total distance is 5 pi over 6. And so if we chop that into four equal pieces, we could find how far it is from there to there. So divide by four. So divide by four, that gives me 5 pi over 6 times 4 is what? 24. So now we just need to go to here and add, uh, add a distance, add a distance of 5 pi over 4. Almost there. Almost there. So I do want to get rid of this. 
Okay, we have a 5 pi over 24, so I'm getting rid of this. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Okay, so now in other words, I'm taking this, whatever value that is, and I'm going to add on to it 5 pi over 24. That point is pi over 3. How do we get a common denominator? Pi by pi eight. 8. 8 on the top and the bottom. 8 pi over 3 times 8 would be 24. 5 pi over 24 is the total of how many pi's over 24? Does that reduce? No. no. It is very prime. So 13 pi, as opposed to being kind of prime, right? Like one, one is kind of. <laughs> one's one's primish, I guess. And so we can just say, okay, so you've taken your regular cosine. It used to be over here. You've shifted it to the right by that much. So what do I need to do to the input value here? Um, how do I shift something to the right? It's a minus. I subtract the value, and so I subtract 13 pi over 24. Now, not quite done, we need to distribute that guy in because I didn't ask what that number was. I asked what that number was. That is not in that form, or that is not in that form, so we have to do a bit more calculations and say, okay, then that's cosine. 12 fifths x minus 12 times 13 pi over 5 times 24. 12 20. There we go. This cancels and makes that a 2. 5 and 2 don't do anything with 13 because, like you said, it's actually prime. 12 fifths x minus 13 pi, 5 times 2 is 10. And then we just add in the A, which is 2. We add in the D, which is 1, and that should be the cosine. Alternately, you could say, well, now that we found the phase shift, the phase shift is equal to negative C over D, but we know that that's supposed to be 13 pi over 24. Ah, C over B. B is 12 fifths. You'll notice this is the same thing that we just did. 12 fifths, 13 pi over 24. Take the negative to the other side. Bring the 12 fifths into the numerator or whatever. That's what we just did. The 2 and the 12 and the 13 pi. Negative 13 pi over 10, and yep, that's what you can plug in right there for C. Oops, that's C. Either way you want to do it, they both work, and we get the same thing. So if you could do this problem, there's probably nothing, nothing in the homework is going to be too hard. You have to do it with like tangent. We, okay, so this is where we're going. Next time we meet, we're going to do the same kind of thing with cosecant, secant, and tangent, and cotangent. We're not going to spend that much time on it because it's ultimately the same thing. Like, once you've done this, right, the only difference is going to be that tangent and cotangent have a period of pi. Okay, big deal. And then the rest of it's all exactly the same. And so it's not that hard. We're not going to spend too much time on it. Then we're going to go far and away to the end of chapter 7 and do something... Very cool, or actually, just, I mean, the why the book waits so long to do this is beyond me. But we're good, we're going to do it. So that's where we're going. Any questions on this? Again, if you could, given this this kind of setup, right? If you could do all of this, you're going to be set for a lot of well, definitely your next quiz. So. Isn't cosine the same as like, well, like cosine of x, I mean, sine of x is the same as cosine of x plus two pi, pi over two? So couldn't you just? Add yeah, pi yeah, pi? yeah. That's and that's. Let's see. So let, let's think about it because if we're going from sine to cosine, we have to consider which way we're going. Okay, so here's sine. Cosine would be a shift. There's and there's a couple ways of doing it. We could do it either. We could shift left by pi over 2 units, or we could shift right by 1, 2, 3 pi over 2 units. And we could turn a sine into a cosine. 
And so the the problem though is this guy, right? That B is not exactly the same. And so that's so you could just say, oh, just add or subtract, you know, either pi over two or three pi over two. And it's like, yeah, you you could. And let's see which way would, what would we have to do? Um, oof, I don't want to have to. I don't want to think about that. Even it's already starting to hurt my head because I'm thinking, wait, do we stretch it in here, or do we have to take that into account? And oh. I mean, I guess we could figure that just, out right now. Can't you just do it before you multiply in the twelve over five? Let's see. So if we tried that, if we said, well. We know that the cosine, or we know that the sine was this. So let's try it. Let's see what happens. We know that the sine answer was sine 12 fifths uh, x minus 4 pi over 5. And we could say, OK, so to get from sine to cosine, we need to go backwards by pi over 2 units. So we need to add pi over 2 into the input. Let's see what happens if we do that. Does it work? I don't know. I'm, I'm as curious as you are. Minus pi over 2. No. No, plus. Plus. Thank you. Plus yeah. pi over 2. So then that guy jumps over, and we get 12 fifths x. 12 will kill that guy and leave a 2, a 6, yeah. and a 5 minus 4 pi over 5. Yeah, it doesn't look like it works. But, wait a second, 2 pi over 5, 12 fifths x is what we're saying it should be for cosine. And is that the same? See, here's the problem. Six, yeah. Uh, and it, now maybe if we did it the other way, it might work. Yeah. Minus three pi over two. Oh. That would be oh because minus uh, three <laughs> times six is eighteen, 18 pi over fifteen. <laughs> Uh, no, it would be over 5, because the 2 killed that and that oh, right. 6, yeah. so it would be over 5. And then 18 minus would be 14, and yeah, it's not going to work. Darn it. Yeah, I, and you see what I mean? Like, okay, so in that case, we'd have to work with, you do, it's not as simple as just replacing it for x. We would need to stretch first and figure out, okay, once you've, once you've compressed it, now we have... Instead of it being here at pi over two, it's no longer it's no longer two pi, right? Oh, the new thing yeah. is five pi over six. Yeah. So oh. this would, and then you'd have to figure out what that is and say that's what you want to stretch by and or by shift by. Exactly. By the time you figured all that out, you could have just done the entire problem with cosine. And so it's, it, and you're right though, you can do it. And you're right, it is off by, by a constant amount, but it changes with yeah. the, the compression. And that's the pain. That's what makes this a real pain. And so, yeah, there you go. Okay, questions? Questions about anything up until this point, especially over the homework that you've already had or that I assigned whenever? Any questions on the... Lecture that I that we had on Friday that I finished up and posted. Did you guys finish the lecture? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, and and on speaking of Friday's lecture, since you guys are off this Thursday, we're not going to meet this Friday. Um, and then next Friday, I'm out of town, so that's that's a that's a no go. The Friday of the fifth or the fourth and the fifth, I will be out of town. So. That's not going to happen. So enjoy. All right. OK, so um, all of these, all of these right here are all applications problems. And I'm going to say right now you better show your work for all of them. Some of them are just graph this. But in order to graph it, you're going to need to find out what the period is. You're going to need to find out stuff like that. I would like to see those calculations. If you just draw a graph, I'm going <laughs> to 
I'm gonna throw something through Can you something. Copy it from uh, yeah, please don't. That's yeah. These are due Tuesday with the other. This is all due Tuesday. Everything that has been it's homework eight and nine are due on Tuesday, one week from today. I was just gonna print out this one was crafting it. Yeah, you just do that. That's fine. So number forty-five from this. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go through each one of these and tell you like I'm gonna. There's a bunch of pitfalls with each one of these. Like, I want to tell you how to interpret this stuff. So, for instance, 45 gives you a graph. It tells you that the model is W equals... So, in other words, you're modeling data. And it's telling you that the model, go figure, looks like this. And it just tells you to find B. You don't need to find A. Otherwise, you're going to be counting little ticks and stuff like that, and that's not what it's asking you to do. You don't need to find A, you don't need to find C, all you need to do is find B. <coughs> what could be tricky is this. <coughs> the data is given like this, and it's in a little box. Does it not have like axes? It does, and this is, the, this is what I'm getting at. There's a bunch of little ticks this way. There's a bunch of little ticks this way. And you could get really hung up on counting those. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the bottom right here, and it shows it, there's a zero. Because this is time, okay? And this is time in seconds, it shows. And then there's, I don't know, somewhere around here, there's a one. And then right here, there's a two. Okay? okay? And so what you assume here is that this matches up with that. That that's. Whatever that is, is however many periods, this is the end where this begins. So in other words, this picture would repeat again. Yeah. Okay? And so let's do, I don't think this is, it, it might actually, I might have reproduced it the same way. I may not have, in fact, I think I did. It looks very similar. But let's just do this one. What would the period be for this guy? Um, one, one would be eight. Oh, the period's the smallest. No. Yeah, when does it first repeat? How many seconds until it first repeats? Is it it's like half? Point five. You think I, it looks like point 0.5, but let's make sure. And what I the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna count the number of revolutions, because the period you could think of as the number of or well, if you take The total, I don't want to say revolutions, I want to say cycles. Let's say the total number of cycles divided by the total time, that's what the period is. Yeah. Right? And so we could say, well, hold up. You go one, two, wait, wait. Yes. You go, wait. Ten. Yeah, see, this is tricky. So from here to here is one full period. Yeah? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if we bring it back, that's one full period. So that's one full period. That's two full periods. Yeah. This would be three full periods. Four, uh, four full periods. This would be five full periods. So five cycles in a total of how much time? Two. Two seconds. So it's not quite. Yeah. It's and this is the way I've drawn it. I think it's more straightforward. In fact, Wait. yeah, I think I think yours ends here, and you see, and like that's kind of what I see. I when I look at that. Period five four four two. Well, it's not. It's well, it is. It's it's the period would be that many seconds. Five over two seconds. So in other words, from here to here would be, and five over two is what one point two or point, point oh. It's two point five. Yeah, how is that? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Did I do this wrong? Wait, ah, forget everything I just said. Okay, <laughs> it's the number of seconds it takes to complete one cycle. That's what a period is in this case. And so if you have, so the period is the number of seconds per cycle. Oh. There we go. I, I just had it upside down. Right? So in other words, if you take the total time, 
That's what I get for standing off to the side. I'm thinking upside down. <laughs> and then the total cycles or periods. Yeah, you see, I don't want to say periods here because, yeah. But the total number of cycles, the total time over the total number of cycles, that would be 2 over 5. So this would be yeah, 2 fifths, this one. And you see, I didn't draw it right because I put a third in here which obviously it's sped up. <laughs> if you only get one, two here, it's, your book isn't that bad. But <laughs> pretending that that's not there and we didn't know, then you would say, well, yeah, that would be two-fifths, four-fifths, six-fifths, seven, eight-fifths, nine-ten-fifths, right? Okay, and so that's all you're doing. You're just chopping down the time, and it's kind of hard to see, like, yeah, so I can tell you yours is not this. Like, it's, it's different. It's different, and it is, it's symmetric, and so, yeah, anyway. And my point is, you could sit there, and there's a bunch of little tick marks, and you could count it, and you could be like, well, if that's one, that's a half, and then that's, and it's just like, don't do that. You could just do this. It's much easier, and all they're asking for is this. And so if you know the period, then you could find this. Because yeah. that's not the answer. The answer is not two-fifths, right? It's asking for what B is, not the period. Okay? How are period and B related? Period equals something. Something, two something. Pi two. Over two. two pi over what? Two. Over, no, B. Two pi over B. Two pi over B. So it's pi over two. Is just just pi. The period is equal to two pi over. All right, that's when you just need to you just need to know that. It's always positive, and so they do the absolute value thing because sometimes b it'll be, it'll be given as a negative number, which is a real pain. Um, that's a huge pain. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So here we go. Okay, forty-seven. It says find A and B. And the, like there's a big there's a big paragraph. It says find A and B. And you could go. What's A and B? Well you gotta look at the graph. And on the graph, it's in blue, it's in a different color, and so you could completely miss it if you're not paying attention, but it says that the graph that you're looking at is this, and so you're like, oh, okay, that's what it is, okay. Oh, so it's not shifting. Right, and there's, and there's, right, yeah, there, there's no shift on this one, and it looks something like this, and there's some numbers, and one of the other things you might miss is right up here at the top, it's labeled, it says liters per minute, meaning that the units here are indeed in liters per minute. And then there's information so what's the in the paragraph where you should be able to put all that together. There's information in the paragraph. The output is liters per minute, and what's the input? Seconds. Oh. Read the period and it'll make some sense. And don't think necessarily that this is, this seconds has anything to do with this minutes. Not really. I mean, Technically, it is, but like that's not the point. I mean, you just read the paragraph, and that should it should all make sense. Don't make it too hard, because you should be able to find this value right here. It's it's they they tell you what it is, but if you weren't looking at that, you might not you might not notice what that is. So that's I just again lots of pitfalls with these that you could easily if you didn't know this. This stuff that I'm telling you right now, you could just have a hard time. So, okay, 49. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I want to go back. I want to do what we just did. Okay, so I forgot that I wanted to do that example. So, okay. Aha. <sighs> back to our original picture. From the problem of the day. We had this guy. Like this. We knew that he went through here at one. Went up to here at three. Down to here at negative three. Negative one. 
Thank you. Negative one. Now, let's say that we wanted to continue this guy on. Right, that I was going to continue and do this. Now, the question is, if I didn't know, I might assume that this thing came down and maybe had, well, we actually, you don't know, you won't be able to know what that, that yet. But the question is this, like, does it come down and then come back up through here? I mean, you can kind of figure that out. But really, if you want to draw an accurate graph, one of the easiest things to do is find out whether or not this thing, and let's just use the cosine one, which turned out to be 2 cosine 12 fifths x, was it minus 13 pi over 10 plus 1. Now, one of the easiest things to do here well, mm, yeah. Let's do it this way. Forget about, oh no, we can't do that, because that would do that. Well, okay, whatever. Um, Sorry, right, I, I thought that I had this all planned out. So, the thing is, what we want to do is find out, is this thing positive or negative when it goes through here? Okay, because if I'm drawing this graph, maybe it comes back up and goes right through here. Maybe it doesn't, I don't know because of the way this thing has been shifted. But I want to draw an accurate graph, which is what I'm going to tell you to do for one, of, for, well, for all of these. Like, for in other words, in 49 it says sketch the graph. I'm going to tell you to do it with two full periods. Okay? And that's to include where the y-intercept is. You're not going to know exactly the value, but I want you to be able to tell whether it's positive or negative. And in this case, how do we find a y-intercept? What do we do? How do we find a y-intercept? Plug in zero. Again. Plug in zero for x, because if you're on the y-axis, your x value must be zero. So you plug in a zero here. And man, I shouldn't, I, I don't know. This is probably why I didn't have this in my notes, because I realized that I have to do this type of thing. And that wasn't the point. So let's say it's not that. Sorry, sorry everybody. But let's say you're working on this kind of thing. And you want to know, so you just plugged in a zero. And now the thing that you're trying to find out, is this thing positive or negative, is this. Uh, what was it, 13 pi over 10? Yeah. Is this value positive or negative? Because you don't know what 13 pi over 10, or negative, the cosine of negative 13 pi over 10 is. We don't know how to deal with over 10s. If it were over 6, no problem. If it were over 4, no problem. Over 3, no problem. Over 2, no problem. If it were just 13 pi, no problem. But over 10, we don't know how to do that. How can we find out whether or not this value right here is positive or negative? Well, we could like graph the cosine. Could and then find, where find out where 13 pi over 10 is. Yeah, we could do that. We could do, that's a good one. I like that. We could say, okay, I know that regular old cosine does this. This happens at pi over 2. This happens at pi. This happens at 3 pi over 2. This happens at 2 pi. And now I just need to find out, oh, it's negative. So it's actually this way that we need to worry about. Negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2. Where we say, okay, negative 13 pi over 10 is between which of these guys? Pi over 2 and 0. Uh, I think it's less than pi over 2. Should be yeah. less than pi yeah, over 2. Because yeah. let's think about it. What, like, if it's 10 pi over 10, that's the same as just negative pi. Oh. Right? So if you're counting by pi's over so, 10, yeah. you'd go 1 pi over 10, 2 pi over 10, or negative, negative 3 pi over 10. You'd eventually get to negative 10 pi over 10, negative 11 pi over 10, negative blah, 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 and then you get negative 13 pi over 10, and so the output value should be a negative number. This should be negative. Another way of doing this, the way that I immediately go to, so this is perfectly valid, 
And of course, you could then double check and make sure that you're, you didn't actually go past it, yeah. right? And you could say, well, that's the same as negative, what's five times three? Negative 15 pi over 10. That's yeah. negative 15 pi over 10. So indeed, negative 13 pi over 10 is between negative 15 pi over 10 and negative 10 pi over 10. So negative 13 pi over 10, the output should be a negative number. So you know that's negative. And so if you're trying to figure out where does this cross here, does it come down and then back up? Or does it come down before it goes here? You'd say, no, it must go down like that. Right, and so it must be a negative number. And how would you label that point? Because you must label your, your y-axis intercepts. Um, just with cosine of uh, negative 13 pi. That's what it is. That's just, that's all it is. Because we don't know what it is. This is an exact answer. This is a perfectly good answer right there. All right, so if you're graphing cosine 12 fifths x minus 13 pi over 10, and you do all your stuff and you figure out, okay, that guy goes through there, you had better label that right there. Same thing if like you happen, if you're trying to do cosine x minus one. You go, well, duh, minus one. Well, I guess minus one is over here, whatever. But then when it, wherever it goes through that x-axis, I don't care if it's high or low, whatever. You'd say, well, that's the same thing as cosine of negative one, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Okay. So that's an exact answer. And if we can't get, if we don't have something like cosine pi over 4, which we know is 1 over the square root of 2, then the exact answer is just whatever it is. So if it's pi over 7, it's just pi cosine pi over 7. And that's the exact answer. Okay. Okay. Um, same thing. Yeah. And so for that one, for 49, sketch it, include the y-intercept, and just do one more exercise. Quick one for the same problem, for 49. It's the same thing. I just want to know, again, is cosine negative 11 pi over 12? Is that positive or negative? We could just graph it again. You could graph it again. It's the easier way. Oh. Uh, now it's negative, so we've got to go in the opposite direction. We could count by pi's over 12. You go Five. minus 1 pi over 12, minus 2 pi over 12, all the way down to minus 6 pi over 12, because this is right, negative, negative, negative pi over 2. So all the way down to negative 6 pi over 12. Negative 12 pi over 12 would be here, so negative 11 pi over 12 would be here. This is why the unit circle is still our friend, right? And this is why I, I made us memorize this thing because it's gonna come up again and again. It often ends up being much easier to do it this way. Just to think of, wait, where does this thing end up? And now you can say, okay, since I know that this is where this guy is, the cosine value is positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because it's the x value. This is a negative number right there. The x value is negative, therefore this thing is negative. Okay. Okay. <coughs> number 51, it says sketch a graph, but it refers to a function, d of t. And that's on page 464. It says from example 12. So it's like refer to d of t from example 12. That's on page 464 from the section. And so it's the same thing. And really I think all you're doing is plugging in a couple numbers into it. Or like it's one of those that like it's like d of t equals a sine a bunch of stuff and then it says if a is equal to 0.5 graph d of t. But if you don't know what d of t is if you can't find it, if you, if, or if you just skip over the fact that it says it's example 12, yeah, that could be a pitfall. So I'm just trying to get pitfalls. Okay, so now here we go. This is where we're gonna, this is where all the work's coming today. Number 59 gives you a table. I've made up a table for us. Very similar to uh, this.
f is some phenomenon or function or whatever. Um, and we'll see. And so, it gives you jam, fed, mar, apper, <laughs> may, john, oh, jol, aug. Uh, what comes after August? Sept. Sept. Sep, oct. Oh. And deck. Okay. That's what it says. And then there's a bunch of numbers. And like it gives it tells you it's something. It's like the depth of some, you know, river or something like that, right? <laughs> and I don't care. Like in our example, it's some phenomenon. <laughs> You've measured something once a month, and this is what you get with your measurement. Uh, we're gonna go. 2.1. Seven. Ten point six. 12.1, negative 3.1, wait, I can mark it. Negative 6.7, negative 7.9, negative 6.6, negative 3.0. Then the problem says, <clears throat> let t equal the time in months. Then it says, that is, t equals 1 is January. And so on and so forth. t equals 12 is December. And again, t equals 13 comes back to January. Okay? Everybody got that? Right? Okay. Uh, it says to do that. Okay, now this is, this is what I hate about this. It says, plot the points for a two-year period. The period is not two years. It should say, it should say plot the points for, for a total of two years, or over the domain of two years, or, you know, something like that. But when you hear a two-year period, already locked in your head is like, oh, the period's two years. When you graph this thing, you'll see that it's not. Furthermore, if you're trying to figure, if you have no idea and you're just looking at data, and they give you this data right here, and you plot it, and they tell you to do it for two years, well, you'd have to repeat the same data, right? Yeah. But it might so then the period would be what? Oh, one year. It would be one year, right? And so that's, that one little word could mess up this whole thing. It says plot the points. Just when you, when you read two-year period, don't let you... T like, obviously the period's one year. If they've only given you one year of data and they tell you do that twice, well, then you've repeated the same thing. Obviously, the period would be the thing, the unit that you just repeated, you repeated one year. So the period here, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, it's one year. The problem is the period's not one, right? Because the time is in months. 12. It's 12. So it's 12. Okay, so let's do that real quick. I'm gonna, I did not practice this. This is gonna be a pain. So let's just look at the data here. The lowest thing we have, it looks like, is a negative 7.9. Is that right? Yep, negative 7.9. The biggest thing we have it looks like a 12. Okay, so I'm gonna go like eight, or I like just right around there, just for my scale. I wanna try to do something like this. So when you plug in this three, you could have I mean four, you could have twelve point one. And right now, like you're gonna you're gonna do two full periods, but just to make my life easier and to save time, I'm just gonna do one period. Okay, um, one year of data. Okay, so here we go. January is one. So I'm going to put a one right here. And now I don't want to mess this up too bad. So let's go ahead and do this. If this is eight, I want to make this negative eight. Then that's negative eight or positive eight. 
and then what? How much more? Let's do that. So there's eight. Uh, there's four. This is minus four. And I think we could estimate pretty good with that, right? Yeah. That looks good. Like, I mean, we could do a two and a six. Why not? Two and a six. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How about there? Yeah. We could go thirteen, fourteen if we wanted to. Maybe we need it, maybe we don't. Uh, there's a minus two, there's a minus six, and we shouldn't need to go much farther than that. So, okay, at one, we're 2.1, so that's right here. Now, I'm going to try to make these nice two, three, four, five. You're going to go all the way out to 24, but here we are. So set two, this is, and so now, I mean, now that they've given us this, we're really, we know now January is one, February is two, March is three, and so on and so forth with all these guys. It's kind of nice that they didn't tell you that T0 is January, because I know that the sixth month is June, right? And like, as I'm doing this, I could just say, oh, June is six. August is eight, you know, it's, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so. The second month is seven, so that's halfway between here and here. I'm gonna come right here and do this. In here and here. The third month is 10.6, so that's, uh, like, uh, yeah. And again, this is, a, it, you don't have to be too crazy with this stuff. The fourth month is 12.1, so that goes up to here, about. The fifth month is May, and that's 10.5, so I don't know, it's almost the same as 10.6. The sixth month is June, that's 6.9, so that's about right here. And you can kind of see what's happening, right? Even if I'm not drawing this very accurately, we're going to get a pretty good idea of what's going on. Seventh month is July. That's 2.0. The eighth month is August. That's negative 3.1. So that's halfway between here and here. Ninth month is September. Negative 6.7. So maybe right about here. 10th month, October, negative 7.9, down a little bit more. 11th month, negative 6.6, .6, we're back up. 12th month is back to negative 3. And as you continue this on, now when you go to 13, you'll be back up to here, right where you started and so on and so on and so forth, right? And so we can see that, yeah, and this is what messed me up this morning. I was describing to Mika, I was like, yeah, and then there's one that made a table for something and we're gonna have to do it and, you know, and I was, I was complaining about the whole period thing. I was like, they say period, you know, two year period. So you just think it's, you know, the period's two years, but obviously it's one year because you have 12 months. Wait a minute, but 12, Minus one, right? How did we get the original well, period? The, the period's 11. Right, and so you think, wait a minute, it's 12 minus one. That's the period, but then I did, did, did. No, it's not. Because does it repeat here? Yeah, it's not until you get to 13 that it actually repeats, right? Like think about our original thing. We had, a, we had something like this and I said it's here and here. I didn't chop it off early and say it's there. I had to do the full thing. And so then we took the last thing minus the first thing to get the distance. Same thing here. You haven't repeated when you're at 12 yet. You repeat when you're at 13. So you take 13 minus one and what's 13 minus one? So the period is 12. Okay, all right. So it's going to be exactly the same for your homework. Okay, like um, now let's do it. So that is that's part A. We've done it. Okay, it looks great. Now part B says find an f of t. I'm saying f because I called that f. 
I think yours is D for depth or something like that. I don't know. A sine BT plus C. Assuming that T time, oh yeah, it says it time in months. Uh, plus D, that approximates the data. And then it says plot on the same axes. So in other words, you're going to figure out what this is and then literally just connect the, oh, to come, yeah. just connect the dots. In fact, you don't have to do that. If, if we were doing this on, say, a spreadsheet or on Desmos or something, and you plotted all the points on Desmos, then you found this, and then that would be interesting. But me with my free hand, I'm literally just going to connect the dots, right? Like I'm going to go, okay, then it goes to here, then it goes to here. Like I don't have the skills to be able to say, oh yeah, that one's off by 0.1. And so it must go from here to here. And that one's a little bit lower, so that goes below. No. If you're doing Desmos, it would be interesting to see because they're going to jump around, right? Because here's the thing. This is real. Well, this is made up data. But the, the real world data is not exactly on the lines. And so what we're going to have to do here, and this is the nice thing about plotting it, is you could say, just, just by eyeballing this, what's the height? What's the max height? 12. 12. You're going to say, yeah, the, the max height here is 12. What's the minimum height? Eight. Eight. Negative eight. Yeah, I didn't draw that very well, but you can see. But here you come back and you go, no, 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 no. It's only 7.9. It's like, do you want to make your life a living hell? You could do 12.1 and 7.9 if you want. But they're but, the same. They're off by the same. Uh, well, I, let's say I did it the other way then. You know, like, um, yeah, right? The, the, the idea is make your life easier when you're approximating data because that is what it says to do. It says to approximate the data. So, what's A in this case? Um, uh, half of ten. 12 ten. minus negative 8, wait, oh. which is 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 12 minus, so basically what's 12 plus 8 is 20. Half of that, Victor is absolutely right, is 10, and so A equals 10. Okay, what's D? Shifted up by how much? One, no, two. Wait. Two! The way I did it in my head is since I went ahead and drew this here, I said, well, if that's 10, you go down 10 from 12 and you're going to be at two. So that must be my midline yeah. right there. Right? And so D is equal to two. What do we need in order to find B? The period? What is the period? Uh, 12. 12. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> the period is equal to 12, but the period is equal to what over what? Uh, 2 pi two over pi over absolute value of B. B. We're going to assume that we're going to use a positive B, because why would we want to do this thing in reverse? Like, that's just crazy. So, I'm going to bring the B upstairs, bring the 12 downstairs, and that reduces down to what? Oh, that's nice. That is nice. We can actually do that. So, <coughs> now, okay, we're almost there. Now we just need C. And let's do C two different ways. The nice thing is, this guy, by the way we've defined it, we're just going to go ahead and say, yeah, you're two. You lost your point one. You are two. And that's where sine begins. And now, it would be different if they asked, if they wanted a model with cosine. If they wanted a model with cosine, we'd say, well, that's your first, that's your peak right there. And that's the thing that was shifted from here. In which case, the phase shift would be 4. In this case, we're talking about sine. We have the midline. It's really helpful to draw this midline. And if you guys could learn how to draw a dotted line, <laughs> it would make your lives so much easier. I it's like, it's well, like work on it. Just move your whole arm. You're moving your arm. <laughs> Like when you do it. It's, anyway, okay. So we know that we're here at two. So that's the thing that gets moved. So in other words, if we had a sine pi over six t, he would be the right thing, but he would be over right there. And so now we need to move him how many units in what direction? Um, one. One unit in which direction? To the right. right. So you subtract. 
So we subtract from the input, which means we use parentheses, which are our best friends. And... So it's just minus pi over 6. So it should just be, yep, sine of pi over 6, t minus pi over 6. Now let's check that with the formula for phase shift. Oh, negative c over b. Yes, negative c over b. So the phase shift is equal to negative c over b, which is, by the, since it's sine, we're going to use the middle one that comes up, and that is at 1. So negative 1 times whatever b is is equal to c. b is equal to pi over 6. And so c is negative 1 times pi over 6 or negative pi over 6, which indeed is what we got there. And so all together now, and now this one doesn't do this, but this would be a great... Uh, Great question. You could say, okay, so we know that f of t is equal to 10 sine pi over 6 t minus pi over 6 plus 2. Yes, because it should be that. Plus 2. Now we could say, uh, so let's say that the problem said starting in uh, January of 2022, these measurements were taken. Predict what F was in December 2021. December 2021 would be what in here? Um, negative 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. Jan 22. Oh, it would be 0. It would be 0. I'm giving you the easy one. Oh. And so <laughs> December 21 would be, in terms of t, would be zero. And so we plug in a zero and say, ah, you're looking for f of zero, which is 10 sine big fat zero minus pi over six is two. What's sine of negative pi over six? Sign is one over one. Oh, opposite over. So it's one one half. Uh, negative. negative. I always negative one half. half. Yep. I know. I, I know. It's the yeah. That's so and so, okay. So, and yes, indeed. Like if we look at sine, right? It comes up first. It comes down over here. And so if you're at negative pi over six, you should have a negative number. Also, you can use a unit circle. La, 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 la. And so. That so, right there is 10 times negative 1 half plus 2. 10 times negative 1 half is what? Five. Negative 5. Negative 5 plus 2 is what? Oh, negative 3. Hey. And hey, yeah, that's what it was this year. Uh, so, yeah, that's what the, the model predicts it would be that year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's fine. It's just every year's going to be the yeah. same. Yeah, well, it happened to be that. Remember, like, if that were a 3.1, we would have called it 3 anyway, yeah. you know? And so, like, for instance, if we do 2, yeah, so if we said, what will it be? Five, six, oh, that also works out to be exactly that. Um, June would be what month? Six? Six months. So pi minus pi over six, you'd be at pi minus pi over six would bring you up to five pi over six. Uh, and so over six would still be a half, and we'd be positive because the y value would be positive. So you'd have 10 times a half would be 5 plus 2 is 7. You see it's not exactly the same because it's off by a little bit, but it would predict it to be 7. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, so that's what you're going to do for 51. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. 59. And I think 61 is the same, same thing. 61 is the same thing as 59. The table's longer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I did all this on my own last night. Chill out. So, <laughs> it's longer, but they only ask you to do one period, which, period of two years, man, what a 
Okay, so that's but it's the same thing. Now, okay, finally. <clears throat> 61 is the same as 59. 63 and 65. It's one of those graph, so graph it using Desmos, okay? Or whatever you want. I don't care what you use. Graph it. Um, just no, try not to do to. any divination. <laughs> don't pray to any spirits or anything like that. You can't trust them. Or they will lead you astray. And not just in your math homework. I'm talking about, like, in general. Okay. Um, but yes, use whatever graphing software you like to use. And it's one of those, it's going to, it says, describe behavior as x goes to zero from the left, and as x goes to zero from the right. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there's any difference either way for these two, for, these two, for 63 and 65. However, I will say that number 63 is known as, well, part of it, is known as the topologist's sine curve. It's a very, it's used as an example in very often with, with uh, higher level stuff. It's a great counter example. You're going to see it and go, what? I have no idea. Then you're going to look at the answer in the back of the book and go, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm seeing. Um, it's not easy. I mean, it's not like, oh, this is what's happening. There's like, it takes some serious, serious guns to figure out what's happening there. And it's, yeah. So when you see it and go, I have no clue how to answer this. You shouldn't. Like, that's the idea. It's, it's, ugh. Okay. So, um, for 67, you had better know what a horizontal asymptote is. You know, we know what asymptotes are. Yeah. Like for, Zero. like, logarithmic, you know, which well, one had, which one? So, well, let's think about this. 1 over x. We know what that guy looks like, right? Oh. He comes down like this and goes like this. And so there's a vertical asymptote here. There's also the horizontal asymptote in this case would be the thing that this is approaching. It never quite gets there, right? And so a better example would be if we took the function 1 over x plus 1, we took this picture, shifted it up by one unit, the way you'd have to draw that is like this. So you go, oh, it comes down like that. And then it goes, does it go through it? Well, it has to. Yeah, it has to go through somewhere like that in there. And it's probably at negative 1. Yep. Yeah, anyway, who cares? So the idea, though, a horizontal asymptote is as you move in whatever direction, this thing approaches it but never quite gets there. And so if you graph something and you see something getting close to some number but not quite getting there, that's a horizontal asymptote. Estimate what that is. In this case, if you just graph this, you didn't know what this was, and you just graph this, you'd say, well, it looks like it's getting really close to this line. And then you could look and say, Oh, because you graphed it, it'll tell you what number that is. And you go, oh, that's the number one. Oh, the horizontal asymptote must be y equals one. Right? Okay. Um, and for those last ones, for 63, 65, and 67, the last three, you really don't need to show any work. But I am going to ask that you actually graph it. Like, don't just write what's in the back book. Like, actually graph it and see it and play with it and et cetera. Okay. On Desmos? Yeah, or whatever. Whatever. Just don't pray to any spirits. Like, they cannot trust them. No divination, please. Uh, no, don't make any sacrifices or anything like that. Or, like, you know, pour out libations. I always do that. No! <laughs> Stop it! Okay. No. Um, so, yeah, just whatever graphing software you like. If you, if you want to do it with a graphing calculator, that's what else. What's that? I don't know any other besides this one. Yeah, that's it's well, all you I need. You can't really. I mean, like, that like that you could, one. if you know, there's they're graphing calculators, and you know, like usually it. in a trig class, you your teacher would require that you have a graphing calculator. I don't care, like, I, because there's Desmos and stuff like that. There's much better stuff out there. 